start watching this, dude. Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd. I hope you're doing well. Thank you for clicking on this video because it's on a very important topic, uh, not quite the uh, usual drama and silliness that we cover on this channel. This is a union and a music industry type video that I hope sheds some light on a very strange and unsettling viral moment from this past week. There are less than 50 of us at YouTube Music and we're taking on two of the largest corporations in the world. So to be supported by the city of Austin and also our allies in the labor community. Oh shit. Give us the motivation to keep this fight Not going. Not to interrupt, but they just laid us all off. Oh. Yeah. They, what? they just laid us all off. We just all, I guess we just all Our got jobs a... are ended today, effective immediately. Oh shit. Wow. Um, I'm sorry your time's expired, but we'll, we'll follow up on this. Thank you. Those were two formerly subcontracted Google employees what? who were part of a larger team responsible for a wide range of duties uh, dealing with YouTube's music platform, YouTube Music. The dashing fellow at the podium there is Jack, and we'll be talking to him later in this video. The team wasn't just doing some uh, kind of regular, short term, defined ending type subcontracting job. I mean, it was fish and actually chips. an ongoing thing that had been seamlessly Boy, renewed multiple times uh, to the point where uh, this team was actually seeking the ability to unionize under their subcontractor company and Google. But unfortunately, oh, so they, they union squashed. Google has been kind of sidestepping any responsibilities that they might have here in this situation. And as a result of that, this team of subcontractors were trying to find other ways to Tommy already got me, man. Watching the British boys? Yeah, there I got my ass. Uh, essentially bring Google to the negotiating table to work out better terms around benefits, pay, and a host of other things. Grab by the balls and negotiate with them. for them was actually going to this Austin City Council meeting and getting them on board with the team's unionization efforts with an eventual vote down the road, a vote that Google tried to delay, mind you. In lieu of this City Council vote, Jack was up there making his case for the team's union efforts, and Google's response to this was to fire the entire team literally right then and there. Now, I could go on about how preposterous and ridiculous this is, as I have in multiple videos on this channel where we talk about uh, union efforts behind a lot of our favorite music sites, Bandcamp being a prime example. But in this case, Jack Benedict and his coworker Ian Flores actually reached out to me for a conversation around this topic. And I figured it would be even better to sort of hear it straight from uh, the subcontracted horse's mouth <laughs> so for further insight into this issue here's me talking the sexy with Jack horse's and Ian. Mouth. okay so like i said uh here we have uh ian flores and jack benedict of the recently laid off youtube uh, music team um just to kind of get into it uh google quickly responded to a lot of the articles and discussion around this and their sort of sidestep uh, around this issue publicly has been uh, you guys aren't officially Google employees and that you're sort of subcontracted through, you know, another company cognizant. Um, you know, what, what do you guys have to say to uh, to that, you know, response from the company? No, to they don't work for us, dude. Uh -huh. and firing? Um, yeah, I think Google has been sticking to the same message, but we won the joint employer case, um, the National Labor Relations Board, I think it was last April, ruled that Google and Cognizant were in fact joint employers, meaning they had equal responsibility to um, <laughs> come to the bargaining table, they had equal responsibility I mean, over it's our- It's a compliment, that's real. Um, working conditions in terms of employment, uh, so- Dude, I can't get this one piece of fish to check. The NLB has uh, been very clear. Work. Google has been losing their appeals and um, since then, they've just been breaking labor law by refusing to acknowledge us as their employees and refusing to negotiate. Hmm. Yeah, what the yeah, fuck, it, it seems like a lot of their narrative spinning around this whole issue is just, again, acting like it's a subcontractor thing and uh, pretending as if their association between you guys and YouTube Music uh, has not really been that long. From what I understand, like this, this contract's been going on for a while, this, uh, this work uh, uh, employment agreement. Yeah, absolutely. I would I would even add to that too. Um, you know, in previous years, our contract has been renewed um, pretty seamlessly, like w in ways where we didn't even realize it was renewed. Um, and so, with traditional contract work, there's usually some sort of finite ending to the contract. Yo, sharks, let's fucking go, bro. 
like you're you know you're building a certain platform or like an application and yo and, what's up uh Mo monica welcome in and then you find something else so the, the, how are you doing i homie the type of work we are doing is it's kind of never ending we're always getting requests in and it's it's basically essentially all on the google platform and so um you know that added to their legal responsibility to actually come to the negotiating table with us you know kind of um defeats all of the I'm arguments that they're making and especially with the NRL nlrb ruling that we are um that they are in fact our employers you know multi at multiple levels um and so you know they're pretty much out of appeals now too so mm. um but yeah, they've been kind of sticking to that same talking point. Is there a reason that you think this decision came down exactly like, you know, during this moment, during this, um, you know, Austin City Council meeting? Um, is, is there something that their decision as a result of this would have forced their hand at, at doing that, you know, would have put them in? Chad, you know what else I got, dude? I got a pop tart. I got a pop tart, dude. This position where they acted uh, sort of a uh, rash and and you know did this sort of a uh, you know lay off of the whole team. Dude, Charles, that is crazy, bro. Absolutely. I think um, I'm not sure how many of the news articles cover it, but uh, I was there with my coworker Katie. Um, we were um, trying to get or speak to Austin City Council for them to pass a resolution saying the city of Austin supports workers and that they urge our employers to negotiate with our union. Um, we had learned that the day before the meeting, uh, someone from Google had reached out to the members of city council asking them to delay the vote. And when we got there 10 minutes before the meeting, what? they told us the vote had been delayed until the next meeting a month later. Um, I'm not sure if Google and Cognizant expected us to still be able to speak on the issue, even though it was postponed, um, but we did. and. It just happened to work out uh, where in the the four minutes that in total Katie and I had to speak, the news dropped and I think it, it really backfired on Google and Cognizant that this has really blown up and gotten our story out there and kind of shown how contractors and temps are treated in the tech industry. Yeah, I would definitely make a scene too. I'm not going to lie. I would make a scene over this. Imagine getting let go in the middle of something like this in front of like a shit ton of people. Fuck, fuck YouTube, fuck Google for this. Hmm. Is there a reason that you guys think that Google has been sort of like extending these jobs for this contract out so long? I mean, is it sort of normal practice for a company as large as Google with, um, you know, already like, you know, a huge uh, union covering a lot of their you know, full-time and salaried workers, like, you know, hiring out for uh, pieces of their platform as essential and as large as like YouTube music on a regular basis? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, it is kind of regular practice and not just with Google, with multiple other companies where they hire kind of a middleman, the subcontractor. Um, so like Cognizant in order to do the same type of work that, you know, normal full-time employees normally do. Um, and I remember reading something a few years ago. There was like somewhere over 50% of Google workers are contracted. Yeah, um, around that number. Yeah, so, something around that. Yeah, yeah, don't quote me too much on that, but it was a few years back. Um, and so this is kind of a normal thing from it's cheaper labor. It, it costs less that, you know, that basically they're unionized. We pay a company to hire us. And in fact, while we were also at Cognizant, we were training uh, a team in India. Um, which a lot of articles don't necessarily mention too much at the moment, but we are training at multiple teams in India and they actually still work for YouTube music. Um, we don't know what kind of contract they have, what kind of pay they make, what their terms and conditions are. Um, but they are still, as far as I know, YouTube was really like, yo, they got totally different union laws out in India. Oh yeah. We need a squad out there. <laughs> we actually, we need three squads out there. We need to get rid of this U S squad that can unionize and make us, um, Oh, pay them what they're worth. Oh, Give them livable wages? Blech. As of right now, still working on the work that we were doing. Um, so that's that's also been um, pretty frustrating to, to learn about uh, as well within the last week or so. I know that publicly the Alphabet Union has been in... On Cripe. Shut up. Who's Cripe? Support of you guys outside of being vocal about, you know, what's been done here. Is there much else that they can do or are doing um you know for your cause at this moment um i believe the alphabet workers union i mean we have our lawyers in the legal system but oh crip oh 
Okay, Sunsea. Welcome in, family. How are you doing tonight? As we've seen just with our case and with bet, Austin, multiple bet. cases all over the, uh, the country, uh, the legal system moves very slowly. And I think um, it might be a while before we see any kind of tangible success, but that doesn't mean we're going to stop fighting for kind of justice over this and for, for workers' rights. Um, has any of your actions here, you know, this council meeting, this firing, um, the ending of the contract, uh, created any tension between, you know, you guys and Cognizant, or have they been pretty much like silent on uh, the whole thing and it's just another con yo any new youtube frogs what's good by the way my name is chris sorry usually i don't just stuff my face and react usually sometimes i'll at least interject like ah, ha, ha. or like ah, ha. or like oh my god my dick when ha, my stroke game be like so like yeah i hope you enjoy your stay here if you do feel free to drop a sub i'm also live on twitch if you want to check that out link in bio contract ending to them uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's just really another contract ending to them. There hasn't really been much communication aside from kind of the next steps for us. Um, we're being put on what's called like a bench policy, which, which is um, basically their way of having us look through. Sunseed, what kind of um, what kind of games do you like on me? Through jobs on their kind of portal platform kind of situation, but that's really the only extent of communication we've had besides, you know, whatever they say to the press, but there hasn't really been anything that we have, we've had, you know, indirect communication over. So uh, as far as um, uh, kind of peeling the veil back a little bit on, you know, the inner workings of, of what you guys were doing a bit, like I, I think just because, Rahala, hell yeah, dude. you know, uh, a lot of music. That poor guy looks so tired. Are you talking about me right now? Fans are going to watch this and are sort of like, you know, curious at it's it. Uh, from, you know, sort of a YouTube music and streaming perspective. Uh, what what was sort of the day-to-day? -day... No, the bottom? Damn, first you're calling him poor. Now you're calling him a bottom? What the fuck? Activities and responsibilities that you guys had at, you know, YouTube music while you were contracted. Dude, I got to tap into Brawlhalla. I've been meaning to play it. I just know I'm gonna be so bad at it and get my ass handed to me so much, but I know, know it would be really fun. Did there? I imagine, you know, to kind of reduce it down metaphorically, a lot of what you guys were doing uh, was the glue that sort of like. Yo, Sunsy, I appreciate you, dude. Like, you want to see like mainly where I've been rocking with a, a lot of content recently? I have another YouTube channel called Christian TG ninety two TV. If you want to get like a real feel for like my normal like content that I do. Feel free to check that out, dude. I appreciate you. Thank you for the like, man. Platform like YouTube Music together. What exactly is that glue, and and what you know were you guys doing? Or gamer, so like make it function as smoothly What's as up, any other gang? Uh, you know music streaming platform out there. Yeah, uh, we had multiple separate teams that worked on different things. We had a team that uh, specifically focused on the the charts of YouTube. Oh, by music, the way, the trending songs and stuff like that. Chad, if anybody from Twitch wants to check out the new YouTube channel I've been working on. Our largest team focused on making sure discography, lyrics, that kind of thing were correct. Um, making sure that this song actually belongs yeah, there's a link. to this artist and not some other artist with the same name, which doesn't happen very often with big names, but when you get to smaller artists, there are there's a lot of overlap with artists who- When you get to smaller artists, like, knocked loose. Um, I think they might be able to get away with going by their first name. Yeah, flip but you, name Josh. not Beyonce, their name's <laughs> Gary. And there's 30 <laughs> different Garys on one page. Gary! And you have to go through and be like, okay, this one's hip-hop, this one's K-pop. And which, what is the actual one I'm looking for here? Um, Ian and I were on the same team. <laughs> we were in charge of enabling artists' uh, YouTube music pages. Um, and we had a lot of research to do where um, if an artist was on a certain label, uh, let's say uh, some K-pop artist is on warner music korea sony music korea they're on one the k we have to go find the music videos on these channels and get them um added to their page so that their uh, full page represents their discography completely so i mean that's a lot of time that's a lot of focus it's a lot of effort i mean you're essentially yeah. kind of like uh archiving for a giant infinite record store uh, just on the internet <laughs> yeah essentially yeah um pretty much and we also have the charts team um they usually i would say they have the kind of busiest job and most stressful job because they you know charts are kind of always updating each week um but yeah there, there's definitely a, a ton of different 
positions that we had uh, within the. This shit ass. I need to unionize. Uh, within the YouTube music team, um, all of them had to have you know some sort of music industry background. It's not ass, by the way, Josh. Uh, it's I some sort King. of degree as well within kind of the music industry or somewhere around that. You know, experience was also um, considered as good qualification. But again, to mention before, like these aren't necessarily a lot of people. I, I think have been misinformed when they see you know Google workers or YouTube music workers is that we are not making a Google salary. Um, most of us are making about nineteen dollars an hour, which if you know about Austin, um, is not really the most sustainable salary. Uh, at least for right now, it kind of works out to a little bit over forty thousand dollars a year. So, but yeah, in terms of the workflow and stuff, there's all kinds of diverse things that we did within the team. Hmm. Yeah, there's a substantial lack of. Um you know benefits too again again building wow austin show on this assumption that tech workers make a ton of money and have these great benefits um we we didn't even have paid sick leave they actually took that away um at the what? end of the pandemic when the cdc declared the pandemic to be over our employers uh told us the 40 hours of paid sick leave was no longer necessary and we what? had to resort to our paid time off whenever we got sick and what multiple instances where people who didn't have enough PTO left had to come into the office with, with COVID literally. With COVID, uh, yeah. It was crazy. Uh, no, I mean, that's, that's actually kind of, uh, <laughs> Hey, my man, listen, uh, CDC says that, uh, <laughs> CDC says that the, uh, fucking, was that shit called that people would die from back in the day? Fucking, you know, CDC's the CDC says the plague ain't real no more, my boy. So, no more off time for you. Why'd, our, why'd half our office die? Why'd half our office die? Wait, what just happened? Wait, the plague? What? But the CDC said that wasn't real anymore. What? Demented. Um, <laughs> A little to, bit. <laughs> to put it frankly, um, you know, when it comes to things like uh benefits generally as you're sort of being subcontracted like who does that usually fall on you know it, it sort of sounds like it's a situation where uh you're between two parents and collectively uh they should have a responsibility to you but they're both kind of shrugging their shoulders and passing the buck or something you know i mean yeah uh be single so by yourself and I mean, so phoenix what's up family how goes it they cognizant provides the benefits um and Thank you for the, the bread checks, essentially yeah and maybe like onboarding hr like kind of that general kind of bare bones part of what an employer does and that's kind of the argument is that we are in charge what about you i'm amazing cannot complain a little sleepy but we're getting through part of this so we're your employer while google pretty much does everything else they do the workflow they, they actually have terms on which we are doing well doing not well uh, with like QA scores and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, Cognizant is, yeah, to answer your question, Cognizant is in charge of the benefits and the pay, but that's kind of it. And in terms of everything else that we do in the workplace, it's kind of run by Google or they call it the client. And so that's- You have work tomorrow, I can't do it. Oh, I can't do this. I have to pack. I'm sorry, homie. I'm sending you love. You know, Rural parents are kind of arguing who has the most responsibility <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. So, um, but yeah. Uh, is there anything as far as you know in terms of like the alphabet workers union um th that they can do to sort of alphabet workers union that uh is about uh 20 percent of google's workforce of leverage situations like this i mean you know it's, it sort of seems like while obviously their union has sway and has influence within the company google's also trying to circumvent that a bit by having so much of their labor being attributed to contracted mm -hmm. workers where there is sort of a middleman and they can kind of like act like well we don't really have that much responsibility with these employees and these contracts and so on and so forth because they're kind of coming by way of another uh you know uh, another outlet yeah i think this the system of contracting out employees um seems it's kind of uncharted territory as far as unions and uh um the legality of that where almost by design it's to contract out the employees say that they're not our employees and when they unionize claim deny responsibility for negotiating with them so like uh, i think we're one of the very first um we are the first 
union that went on strike for, um, at Google. And I think we're one of the very first um, contracting unions that's really fighting for this. And I hope what we can do is kind of lay the groundwork and kind of put an end to this this system where that would be amazing. Uh, the workers' rights are just being flat out ignored because of some technicality of oh they're not our employees so we don't have to send it back to their router Midwest. Holy shit, bro! I'm sorry that happened to you though, dude. To them at all. Does that recent NLRB decision that you mentioned earlier where, you know, it was agreed that there is some kind of like joint responsibility there, does that give you guys any sort of like pathway going forward from here to make a move, you know, legally or, you know, by some other, uh, you know, I, I guess like pipeline, systematic pipeline to actually like, you know, make a, a force Google's hand here or make a change long term? Um, not particularly. I would, I would, just, I would assume kind of because this, at this point, now that we are no longer employees, it, you know, within the next few weeks, we are actually considered no longer employees. The most we can do is kind of like, kind of what Jack mentioned is, is spread influence and try to assist others within the union as much as we can, um, and try to again spread a message of solidarity and again just helping others organize their workplace, especially you know in tech. Uh, where there is, are these systems of, of two-tiered systems, essentially. But in terms of legally, uh, the legal system, we do have to wait quite a bit of time to really actually hear any kind of updates on any kind of repercussions that that um, Google will have to endure and, and Cognizant. Um, Jack mentioned before, the legal system does take a, uh, quite a bit of time, especially with the NLRB there, massively underfunded uh, and, and understaffed. And so it does take a little bit of time for any kind of results to actually to come through yeah we can hope but um i mean we're seeing right now because google is so big and so powerful they hey, are able to just flat out ignore the nlrb decision even upon ap losing appeals they decide oh we're just going to ignore this and kick the can down the road and see how long we can do that for until we actually have to um take responsibility and we have no idea how long that's going to take mm. uh as of right now from here, you know, is there anything that people watching can uh, sort of do for, you know, uh, you and your team's cause uh, as of right now, or just like, you know, is uh, kind of paying attention and supporting you guys and trying to keep a finger generally on the pulse of this, you know, growing issue, the, the, the most that can be done? Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, sharing. The, the clip, the news articles, really getting the word out is is the most we can ask people to do. It's pretty simple to repost a TikTok, uh, retweet, um, any of those kind of things. Uh, while we wait for the, the legal process to play out, all we can do is kind of keep the public pressure on our employers to... Not, to... not just smoke the pressure, kids, but to apply it to the powers that be. <laughs> Turn things around. Ian and Jack, thank you for coming through and just like kind of explaining everything, laying it out and just making this. Did the 38 year old music critic just say coming through? It's a bit easier to understand for right, throw back to the video from earlier from the outside and has a lot of maybe misconceptions about unions, tech, subcontractors and just YouTube music in general. Yeah, cool. absolutely. Thank you yeah, so much for having us. us be here and tell our story. Shout out again to Jack and Ian for coming through and making. The Dude, I mean. Had no idea this was going on. That's crazy, dude.